Jess Wu Calder is uh, the director and executive producer of Blind Spotting on Stars. I'm David Buchanan with Gold Derby. Jess, I want to dive into the episode that you submitted for the Emmy ballot, which is uh, season two, episode three, because it's such a huge episode. It's got, um, it's really emotional, very important storylines and two huge kind of centerpieces, um, really beautiful stylistic moments. So I wanted to start just by asking you before we dive in, you know, sure. kind of more granularly, um, what were you most excited to tackle in this episode? And what did you find most daunting about the work on this one? Oh, wow. Um, well, I think it's really funny because um, this was my first time as a director, just in general. And I remember when I, um, when Rafa, Diggs, and Keith and I first um, made the decision that I would direct in, in season two, Rafa was really insistent that it be a really hard episode. And he's like, it's going to be the hardest episode so that everyone in the world can, can, can see that you can do it and that you can also see that you can do it too. And so um, with episode three, I feel like I can safely say that it, it tackles, oh, there's a little feather, sorry, just getting out of the way. Um, with episode three, I feel like I can safely say that that is, um, I would say the whole episode I found to be a, a daunting, a creative challenge and um but I think for me just in general like that's not something I ever shy away from so at the same time I was incredibly e excited about the opportunity um and the thing that I love the most about it is that it, at its core it really is such a beautiful intimate story about this the, this family trying to just spend quality family time to together be, be behind bars which I think I don't know if any other show has ever shown that, and um, but that it still has all these really sort of um, larger than than life artistic, grand epic pieces that that just sort of weave weave in and out. Yeah, let's dive into the family visit aspect of the episode because that's obviously where the heart of the story is. Um, just tell us where did you shoot that? It's set in San Quentin. Did you shoot on location, and what was it like to? you know, find your camera placements in that room, you know, you get, as you were saying, you capture the kind of love of that family meeting, but there's also a bit of claustrophobia. It's yeah. really, it's totally very interesting. So how did you find navigating the space with the camera, um, mm -hmm. you know, literally the confines of it, and also when you get to kind of break out and go outside a little bit, just talk about, you know, navigating and exploring the space. Sure, uh, we shot um, a lot of it on a set that we did an exact duplicate of what the San Quentin weekend vis visitation set, um, not, it's not a set for them, uh, suite is. And then we were very lucky enough to work with San Quentin to also shoot um, for a day up up, up there too. So, so, so that was definitely, when you ask about a daunting challenge, another one that I would just add, add in, in there, it was, um, such an incredible experience to actually be there and, and feel exactly what what it's like and I would say that even in the writing of the episode a lot of it was informed by a lot of the early location scouts that that we went um just to like one of the things that 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 came up on you know on, on the scout is me actually seeing on the wall that there was a sign saying every single time um, the prisoner is counted for. And as soon as I saw that, I was like, oh my God, like this has to be, um, you know, in the, 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 this episode, because I can't even imagine like what it could be like to have to wake up and, and, and to have and to have this alarm, like, li, li, you know, ripping you from this cozy family experience that, that, you're, that you're trying so hard to pro protect. In terms of sort of the like overall tone of the of the piece, I kind of, you know, for like us, me and my deep DP Tarrant, who's incredible, um, I know that for us, it was important to sort of play on the idea of the claustrophobia. Uh, we, you know, you can't get away from the fact that it is a very small confined space. And on top of that, I think it was important to also sort of show that this family while they're visiting um, Miles is in prison. And so, um, having it feel in the very beginning like this beautiful warm um probably as as open as that space ever feels when they first em embrace it was sort of uh 
you know, a very dull, a deliberate choice on, on, on our part that from every mo moment on that it kind of shrinks and you kind of feel it more and, the, and then the lighting becomes dimmer. I know in the, the very final argument, like it was very important to, to, to me that we strip away any warmth that you might've felt and that it feels very cold and, and, and sterile and dark and sort of um, as moody as, as and, and intense as, as it can possibly feel. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about working with uh, Rafael Casal on that scene that you're mentioning at the end of the episode, because obviously he knows this character inside and out so intimately. Um, mm -hmm. How did you kind of walk him through what your vision was for that argument, that final scene? Because his performance in that is so heartbreaking mm -hmm. and painful. Um, it comes across so well, you know, the pain, yeah. um, and he's just so terrific. But what was it like exploring that with him, who, as I said, you know, knows the character inside and out? Oh, I mean, it's been such a wonderful journey working with Rafa just in general. I'm, I'm, don't know if everyone's aware, but like I, I've, I've been working in the blind spotting universe for over a decade now, um, because we started with, with, with the film. And in this moment, I think for us, it was just really important that we understand. Um, I think that the whole weekend has been leading to, to the, this point, and I kind of liken it to, to the idea of it being like a kettle, like about to boil over and at any moment that he, he can snap because the whole weekend he's been trying so hard just to hold it in and 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 to sort of um and I don't want to say fake but in kind of kind of to sort of put up a front that everything is okay for, for his family because they're trying again to carve out this like beautiful family time um in that moment in 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 that scene it was important for me that um Miles and, and Ashley remain very, very far apart because I think that uh, just in in general with the with the season overall, it's important to understand that they, for whatever reason, aren't com com communicating, and, and 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 a lot of it is because they are afraid to actually say what they're feeling, and they're trying to protect the 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 other one from understanding all the all the pain that they're that they're going through but because of that they have both set set set, set up walls and so in a way like in this in this cabin that is in a prison they they themselves ha have also set up a a line that neither of them is 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 willing to cross and i think once we sort of both you know once rafa and, and jasmine like understood that that kind of idea of, of, what, of what the blocking would would be i think the rest of the argument kind of just felt very in, intentional and, and or, organic where it goes. The other thing that I really love about working with Rafa is that he's a writer. And so um, in that in, in that scene, there's a line that kind of breaks my heart. And it's when he says like, are you gonna make me fucking beg you? And, and that line actually wasn't in the original script for, for, for this episode, but while we were working it out, and during rehearsals, um, we would go back back and forth, and it just never felt like it was coming to, to enough of a, a, a breaking point. And I remember that we like took a moment, and Rafa and I spoke, and I was like, I, I feel like you just need to say something here so unexpectedly that will cut will cut her in a deep way that she's not that 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 she's not you know ready for. And I had no idea what he was gonna say, but in that moment, he said that, and I saw Jasmine's face, and I was like. You know, it was a, it was it was lightning in in a bottle for 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 me. So I just feel really blessed to be working with someone as incredible as him, and and of course like Jasmine. That's incredible. That's a great you know moment in line in that scene. Um, obviously, another standout moment of this episode: the beautifully stylized kind of retelling of race and racism in American history through this beautiful dance um, by John Boogs. Um, talk to us about putting that together i mean it's so incredible and so stylistic and moving and heartrending and um just uh, and, and unexpected for me when i was watching the episode you know seeing how they were going to tackle this conversation it moves to this totally higher plane so artistic um so let's start with how did you work with john on figuring out you know what he wanted to do and then how to capture everything that he was doing with the camera uh, well, I'm again. I would just say, like, I'm so lucky to work with the co the collaborators that I have on on, on this team. Bugs is one of the most incredible uh, move, movement performers I think in the world. So um, I'm blessed. 
uh, st but yes, with with this piece, it, I think both of us were sort of like, kind of um, in shock when we read in the in in the script. It just had like one line that said Sean learns about the history of the N word through dance, and we're like, uh, okay, <laughs> how do we do that? Um, and I think that the I think the beautiful thing about our collaboration is that we were almost always on the same page from, from the, the beginning. And I think that um, we just uh, once we understood that we wanted to like pick these moments in 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 time, and then sort of um, once we understood that we wanted to sort of end uh, with uh, a moment the Black Lives Matter and a police sh shooting kind of doing present day and working back, uh, it it became sort of an an, an organic conversation. Uh, what was really important for for me and and for him was was that this that this be a beautiful piece, and that like even though it is dealing with such uh, horrific topics, that it be done in such an artistic way that really, hopefully, translated the emotion of this of the trauma that that this word has created over time. Um, something that both of us uh, talked about a, a lot is that I, I had always known that like in in the editing that we would have to in, intercut and it was uh, he came up with this beautiful um, refrain of this of, of them being pulled off the auction block or being pulled out of the um, out of the out, out of the diner and then finally this like heartbreaking sort of melting beat and so that allowed um, it, it to be very easily intercut in the edit um with 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 the lighting that i worked with um tar taran on it was really important that we try to just capture what was inside sean sean's head so like for me every single time that it sort of blinks um or has like a starter step it, it really is meant meant to be like his brain pro processing all of the information but it being like an impossible thing for a seven year old to, to to take to take in so really like him his his brain being overwhelmed like with with, with everything that he's hearing but also keeping in mind that it, it's his mom and dad are trying to tell him this story um, while protecting his his innocence, so it, it's going to be a little bit more in in in, in a magical way. Since why the like walls magically move up, and why we have like an illustrated um, back background, so it can feel like it's kind of a, a you know the most <laughs> the most intense, but also most beautiful bed bedtime story ever told. Um, so I don't know if that answered. <laughs> All of your questions, I could talk about that sequence for hours. Um, you know, it was Im important also to for for me and books to like make sure that we give um, homage to all the the civil rights um, icons of the past. And I know there for me, there's my my favorite shot of all is um, there's a woman and she's sitting at, at that diner counter and and sugar is is, is being poured on. On, on, on top of her and that was very much like us trying to say like remember um these people who have been here be, be, before and, and what and what they sacrificed for for us and then towards the end you know right but right before the the shooting occurs it was also important to try to capture all of all of the joy and um the the, the reclamation of this word and 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 what that means um but this is all to say that it it, it even though this word is so ugly and the history behind it is is horrific for us um telling this this, this story with as much beauty in the movement and the beauty of the score was the only emotional way to tell the history of the n-word yeah let's talk about Atticus Woodward's performance he plays he plays Sean uh talk about working with him on this because as you're saying very traumatic history for um, you know the seven-year-old character to understand. What was it like working with him on capturing his emotion and his reaction to this? Because you get some beautiful extreme close-up shots. I mean, we can kind of see some of the action playing out in his eyes. I mean, it's, they're just beautifully composed shots. So talk about working with him on the emotion of the performance too. I just have to say that Atticus is incredible. Um, I, you know, because he's a child and he's seven. We actually were not able to film a lot of it at the same time. So a lot of, um, you know, anytime you see him on the bed and the camera is moving, you know, is like on, is on him, he's reacting not to the dance, but to, you know, like us trying to like tell him what he might be seeing and him 
in interpreting it in such an emotional way. Um, so I just, you know, like I, I can imagine, um, how hard it, it must have been for like him because like he's got like this crazy fan is also blowing to like give the effect of the, the, the bed like you know m you know going through each each scene and he has like me like sitting on the on the foot of the bed like whispering and uh, but he translated it all in such an emotional way. I was very lucky in that um, the like uh, the, in the, the, the close-up of, uh, of his eyes we were able to schedule for um, sort of the very, very end of the shoot. And so I had my um, incredible e editor, he actually did sort of a quick um, edit of the dance and we were able to, for, for that shot, put it on a giant screen and have like shot, I mean, A Atticus just watched that. And so everything he is reacting to then I think is like the way I think why it works so well is because he was actually able to see what he was reacting to. Um, but I, I, again, I have to just like say he was he was doing all that, but also even though he could see the, the, the dance, like in order to get that shot, he was in a like a crazy sort of like neck brace kind of thing. Um, but you can never feel that, like all you ever felt was was his emotion. Before I let you go, Jess, I do want to ask you about um, the other kind of standout moment in the episode, which is Helen Hunt's uh, spoken word um, as Rainey, this beautiful setting at the church and her internal monologue. Um, mm -hmm. Just two questions. Talk, um, talk about working with Helen on that from a per performance perspective. Mm -hmm. And then also talk about, I know she's a prolific director in her own right. So what was it like working with her as a director? Um, and like you said, this is the first time you're directing, you know, an episode of television. So, you know, what did you glean from her um, through working on that really particular scene and beautiful scene? Oh, I mean, Helen is incredible. <laughs> and, um, you know, I feel really lucky that for my first time uh, as a director, I get to work with someone as incredible as she is. Like, I, that, that's, that's just, I'm, I'm lucky. Um, I, I would say uh, with that scene in par particular, that that was a very, it was a long night also because, um, and this kind of relates to your last qu question, for the first half of the night, we were shooting Sean's eye. So sort of like a, a, a funny, um, you know, it was kind of a great in a way because those scenes end up going next to, to each other. So I could go from the emotion of that scene straight into the emotion of, 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 of Rainey's verse. Um, the, the beautiful thing about being able to work with, with, with her because she is also a, a director is that we talked a lot about like what we thought this would like th this shot sh should be. And I think from the start, we both were really um, in love with the idea of trying to do it all in one, in, in one take. Um, for, for me, that verse is all about someone who is so desperate to connect um, and, and, and to, um, who sort of, you know, she's she's in, it's in such a dark place, and she doesn't feel like she has anyone that she can talk talk to, but at the same time, she's somebody who has spent her entire life saying that she doesn't believe in in, in God, and so when she's sitting on the on the steps and she starts that verse, for me, I don't think Rainy is aware that she's even going to pray. I, I think she really is just like thinking out 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 loud um and then so which is why we like chose to like start it from from so far away because she's not she's not really sure and then as the shot uh, as the camera move, moves in and you see um the like stained glass starts to glow like in my mind that would that would always be um if you believe in a greater power uh them reaching out to her to try to embrace her and try to say that she's that she's not alone but unfortunately, where she is in, in this moment, like her, her anger and her resentment is, is, is building up so much that she's sort of drowning in this dark darkness, in, in her loneliness, that by the end, she is just left alone um, on, on, the, on, on those steps. And I think once, you know, like Helen and I spoke a lot about this, this verse and, 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 and the approach and from the beginning, we're completely like understood uh, that this was going to be a very difficult shot to pull off, uh, but that if we did, it would be um, the right emotional way to tell this story. Well, you both pulled it off excellently, and the entire episode is just wonderful. Jess Wu Calder, congratulations on blind spotting. Thanks so much for talking to Gold Derby today. Oh, thank you. I appreciate you. Mm -hmm.